being addicted to food is a real biological fact. It's not just something that we say jokingly. Brain scans and countless high quality scientific evidence exist to prove this. I will link some in the description box below. Unfortunately, while the same amount of scientific evidence was available for tobacco's addictive profile, the public at large was not aware of them until decades later. And for that reason, people continue to get needlessly addicted to cigarettes. So I hope this video allows me to do my part in bridging the gap between the available scientific studies and the level of public awareness around this issue. To start, you should know that the way addictive or hyperpalatable foods affect your brain is by destroying the receptors for dopamine on the surface of your brain cells, also known as D2 receptors. The more addictive foods you eat, the more D2 receptors you destroy. Why is that a problem? Because it is only when dopamine binds to its D2 receptors that you actually feel the powerful effects of dopamine in the form of pleasure, good mood, high energy, mental clarity, motivation, productivity, focus, and a sharp memory. But if you have all the dopamine in the world, in your brain, but not enough D2 receptors for dopamine to bind to, then it's as if you don't really have dopamine in your brain. This is why addictive food consumption leads you to feel sluggish, demotivated, and depressed. Those are all simply the results of a dopamine deficiency caused by the destruction of your D2 receptors. I know what you're thinking right now. Is there any way I can recover the damage I have inflicted upon my brain? And the answer is yes, absolutely. The first thing that you can do to restore D2 receptors is obviously abstinence. That means eliminating or drastically reducing the addictive foods you've been eating. However, it could take up to two years for your brain chemistry to return to normal after the discontinuation of an addictive drug or food. For that reason, it's important that you add additional measures that would speed up that process. So what are the things that you can do to speed up the recovery of your D2 receptors? Number one, ketosis. Ketosis is when your brain and body are mainly running on fats as opposed to sugars as a main energy source. This is because the specific types of fats called ketone bodies that you start using as a main energy source are actually a cleaner, more premium source of energy for your brain. That allows the brain to function and recover more effectively. You can enter a state of ketosis using either a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting. Ideally, you want to combine both keto diets plus intermittent fasting. In order to learn more about a ketogenic diet, which is really what humans have eaten for 99.999% of their existence here on Earth, check out this playlist that includes all the keto videos I have filmed on the topic. I will also link the playlist in the description box below. To learn more about intermittent fasting, make sure you check out this playlist of all the fasting videos that I have created. I will also link that playlist in the description box below. Number two, intense exercise that incorporates progressive overload. Progressive overload means that you are training with the intention of getting stronger and faster. That means the vast majority of your exercise sessions should feel uncomfortable. If you're feeling comfortable, it means you're not providing your body a strong enough signal to get stronger and faster. Thus, your fitness level will remain the same. If you want to recover your D2 receptors as fast as possible, you wanna raise your fitness level as fast as possible. Examples of how you can do that is, you wanna make sure that you are progressing from walking to jogging to running to sprinting. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of my cardio sessions nowadays consist of sprinting intervals interspersed with running recovery intervals. Make sure you're also incorporating a resistance training program in addition to your cardiovascular program. And the great thing about fitness is that it's very motivating to see yourself running faster and lifting heavier and heavier weights. This will provide you with the energy needed to stick to your D2 recovery program. Number three, meditation. There is a dose response relationship between the quality and quantity of your meditation sessions and the concentration of your D2 receptors. That means the better you get at meditation, the more D2 receptors you generate. Also, the longer you meditate, the more D2 receptors you get to enjoy. Number four, hormonal balance. You wanna make sure your hormones are in balance. One way to do that, believe it or not, is to make sure your diet is not deficient in dietary cholesterol. To learn more about that, watch this video I filmed on the topic. I will also link it in the description box below. Number five, gut health. 
Having a healthy microbiome is crucial for a healthy brain function. As a matter of fact, the gut is often referred to as the second brain due to just how closely it influences the functioning of your brain and also your mood. For that reason, you want to make sure you have enough probiotics populating your gut. And to learn more about probiotics, make sure you watch this video I filmed on the topic, which I will also link in the description box below. In addition, I will drop links for high quality probiotic brands that I would recommend in the description box below. Additional resources will be in the description for you, so make sure you check that out. All right, that's it for this video. If you like this content, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so YouTube alerts you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.